I just wanted to talk about um, what I consider to be the ultimate topical in combating hair loss, which I apply on a daily basis once a day. It can consist of uh, several compounds, some you may be familiar with, some others you may not be very familiar with. Now, when it comes to um, what's FDA approved, the only FDA approved product is minoxidil. And I do use minoxidil. Granted, I don't use it as frequently as is uh, recommended. I use it just about once a day, and that's been good for maintenance. However, if you are new to combating hair loss, I do recommend you use it twice per day. However, uh, another product I use is finasteride. And, you know, there's a lot of controversy about finasteride. I haven't had any side effects from it at all. And I think regardless of whether or not you're using finasteride, I think it's also important to make sure that you combat the DHT, DHT referring to the hormone which causes hair loss, uh, topically as well as systemically. Now, there's a lot of uh, garbage products that have been like uh, touted in the past that don't work, like azelic acid, which is total trash, and um, also... Um, uh, oh yeah, spironolactone, topical spironolactone doesn't work as well. It's just too weak of an anti-androgen. And there are some other anti-androgens which actually have worked, like some people have tried topical flutamide and uh, topical um, um, like cyperterra. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but the thing is, is that those actually are too powerful. You have a little bit too much systemic uh, absorption in that case, and you don't want to uh, inhibit testosterone uh, systemically, because even though DHT is that trash hormone that doesn't really serve any purpose other than like enlarging our prostate and causing hair loss, testosterone is absolutely essential for uh, male health, maintaining reproductive health, maintaining muscle mass as well as, um, you know, just um, just maintaining overall well mood and being. So, you know, I'm rambling a little bit, so I'll just get right to the point. So what you're going to need is that first you're going to need a uh, 10 milligram scoop like this. And I'm actually, I forgot one product, so I'm going to pause. Yeah, a 10 milligram scoop just like this. And this will allow pretty accurate measurement. I mean, maybe it's not going to be exact, but um, I prefer to use these for um, mixing in the uh, compound into the into the formula, which I'm going to present in a moment. But you're also uh, going to need what's called Neogenic. And, you know, I'm not being paid by this company or anything. In fact, I can't even say for sure whether or not this even works by itself. And it comes in these little 6 milliliter vials that I feel work extremely well when they're mixed in with other compounds. So... The way you make it is that you're going to take this little vial right here, and it contains the uh, ingredient known as tamoxidine, and you're going to mix it in with an ingredient you may have heard about if you've uh, been involved in fighting hair loss for a while, called RU58841. Now, I'm not going to tell you where to get this because I'm pretty sure it's going to violate YouTube policy. And also, I'll go ahead and just say as a disclaimer, this is purely for research products, and if you use it yourself, make sure it's only for research, but it's a very effective anti-androgen, and the good thing about it is that it doesn't have any side effects. So it's good as both an additional weapon against hair loss if you're using finasteride. Uh, likewise, it's also good if you can't use finasteride and you need some sort of anti-androgen, because minoxidil is not an anti-androgen. It causes uh, hair growth stimulation, despite the fact that DHT is destroying the hair follicle, but inevitably, even if uh, minoxidil alone is working for you, there will come a point where the DHT destroys the follicle faster than the rate at which um, minoxidil can grow it. So you will, maybe not now, but you will eventually need some sort of anti-androgen, and I recommend joining the battle right now. So if an asteroid doesn't work for you, if you get some side effects or something like that, uh, then RU5841 is a very strong candidate, or you can add RU5841 on top of finasteride, especially if finasteride alone is not working very effectively for you. So as far as like how to make it, this is what I usually do with my routine. I have tretinoin. This brand name is called, I mean, the brand name is called Retin-A, but you can get this generically as well. I do have a prescription for this, and I do recommend you get a prescription for it yourself. It's usually prescribed for acne, so if you've ever had a problem with acne, you should have no trouble getting a prescription for it. Now, can it be obtained without a prescription? Yes, but again, I'm not going to say how. It's a pretty safe product, though. And this is the 0.1% variant, and I do not recommend beginning with this. I recommend beginning with about 0.05% um, because this is very strong. It causes skin exfoliation, and it will really, really burn unless you work your way up to this percentage. So I've only using this kind because I've been using it for a while and my skin is kind of adapted to it. Now, this itself doesn't actually treat hair loss, but what it does is that since it causes skin exfoliation, it makes it easier for topicals that you do apply to your scalp to absorb more effectively. So I use this, and on top of that, I actually use a product which is not a drug. 
I use this uh, derma roller right here, and this is something you just gently glide across the scalp. It's a, it's a, maybe it hurts just a little bit, but there's not going to be any blood or anything. And you don't want to dig in too deep because there, there actually might be blood. And you never want to apply a topical when you're bleeding because then you may actually get some systemic absorption that way. So first thing I do actually is I go ahead and I apply the um, derma roller on my scalp. You can find one of these off Amazon.com. I recommend about 1.5 inches, although you can probably get away with something a little bit, uh, probably a little bit shorter than that. And then after that, what I do is that I take this vial and actually I'll put a little drop of this tretinoin cream into the vial of uh, Stamoxidine, which the brand name is Neogenic that I showed you. And then I'll use my little five milligram scoop right here and I'll go ahead and just take this little bag and this is about a 10 gram bag and it probably still has about three grams left and I'll just go one, two, three, four, Five. Make sure it's not a heaping uh, little scoop right here. You want to get your measurement as close as possible. And then what you want to do is that you want to put the lid back on and then you want to shake it really, 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 really hard for about 30 seconds. So after that is done, what you want to do is, sorry about that, was just grab another product. What you want to do is grab one of these little uh, like droppers that come with uh, minoxidil. I mean, perhaps you can buy something like this separately but um, I think it's easier just to buy like maybe a one month supply of liquid minoxidil generic. You can get that for about $10 really cheaply. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna basically use uh, six, this is about six milliliters right here. You're gonna apply it to uh, all the sensitive areas to the scalp. But you know, if you're having a male pan or baldness, chances are you're gonna lose everything on your scalp eventually. So you wanna put this all over your scalp. So usually that's gonna be the hairline. That's where most men start to lose hair first. And then the back of the scalp is where you wanna put the emphasis. Although you wanna get it every Everywhere, especially if you're a diffuse thinner, which means that you're losing hair everywhere all over the scalp. So this is something that's worked extremely well for me. In fact, I can even say that when I was without finasteride for a good while, and that's because I had to get an appointment from my doctor, and my prescription expired by then, and I just um, acted a little bit too hesitantly, so it took about a month for me to get that appointment. So even a month off um, finasteride, I didn't lose any gains uh, as a result of just using the tretinoin cream and the... Uh, the Stamoxidine and as well as the RU5841. This all just worked really, really well. And I think actually uh, my hair has gotten thicker as a result of combining these products together. So I think that is the ultimate hair loss topical. And the good thing is you just have to use it once per day. I'd recommend using it at night because that's usually... Um, the time where you, don't, where you don't have to worry about things like weather or taking a shower, jumping in the pool, so you can make sure that stays on the scalp long enough for you get the full absorption. This does dry a little bit faster than minoxidil, but it still takes about a couple hours. Minoxidil, on the other hand, takes about four hours. And if you're already applying minoxidil, I'd recommend applying, uh, you know, maybe the foam at the beginning of the day. I mean, you can use the liquid if you want, but the liquid does tend to make it a little bit greasy. So for the better cosmetic effect, I'd recommend using the foam in the morning. And then at night, going ahead using the stamoxidine at night and applying all the um, compounds I, 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 I recommended. And again, with the tretinoin, just like a little drop will be good enough or so. Or, you know, maybe if you feel like you're not getting full coverage, maybe add a little bit more and everything. But yeah, be careful with this stuff because it really does tend to burn a little bit and you don't want to be really uncomfortable all night. So that's all I wanted to say about that. It's worked really, really well for me. And um, I've been on a lot of things in my fight against hair loss. I've been on finasteride, dutasteride. I don't use dutasteride anymore, even though I do recommend that, especially if finasteride's not working for you. And it's just purely a cost issue. I, uh, my generic supplier no longer supplies it. And also the pharmacy where I have a prescription is a little bit too expensive. But um, it doesn't really matter with me because I'm maintaining just fine on the compounds I just mentioned as well as finasteride and minoxidil. Worked really, really well for me. I've been combining hair loss for well over a decade and I've seen no signs of things getting any worse. So let me know if you have any questions and good luck in your journey to combat male pattern baldness. Take care.